Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. I would like to uh, just underline what was just said. Keep your questions, your comments, your reactions uh, in mind, and uh, there will be plenty of time to react afterwards and raise your <coughs> questions and objections. The theme for today is Jesus, fact or fiction? <coughs> We are dealing with one individual historical person, Jesus of Nazareth. But let me, let me raise a really basic question here. Why on earth should you and I put aside like 60 minutes or 90 minutes to reflect over one individual from antiquity? Come on, we are more than people. We don't care about the hundreds of thousands of individuals who lived in antiquity, do we? We don't care. It's another time, it's a, what is this, a kind of sound? <laughs> what's, what's the problem? Is it too close? Okay, okay. Hope this works better. Maybe I don't need a mic. <laughs> it's another time, it's another culture, and there are very few connections to us. Why bother about any individual from antiquity, why bother about this? I think it's a valid question. I also think there are some good reasons to reflect about Jesus from Nazareth. Let me give you three. Firstly, this individual, Jesus, is the most influential individual so far in humankind. No one else has created so big and powerful waves into the sea of history as Jesus. We are living in waves he created. Think of it. You know, I come from the world's most secularized country. What do people in Sweden do right now? Well, they plan for their Easter holiday. Why do we celebrate the Easter? Because they, that was the time when this man was executed. A few months ago, the whole culture was focusing on something called Christmas. Now what is that? Well, it's the time when this man was born. Or think of how we structure the week. One special day out of seven, the day he supposedly was raised by God from the dead. Or think of the institutions we are so proud of in our culture. Think of, for example, the universities. Who started the universities? Well, you look into it historically and you will see it was started, well, not by Jesus himself, but by people inspired by the perspective they had from Jesus. And therefore, they wanted to understand this world and do research about what kind of creation they were part of. So the universities were started by Christians, disciples of this man, Jesus. Or think of the hospitals. Why do we work in our culture think it's so important to care about the, the weak, the suffering, the ill, you look to it historically and you will see the emphasis comes from Christians who were inspired by this man and his care and compassion for people who were sick and who were suffering. So, my basic point is here. You cannot understand Finland or Sweden 2010 without a reference to this man, because we all live in the waves he created. So, that's the first reason. If we want to understand our own lives, we need to understand something of this man, because he is connected to us, or we to him. Secondly, and more important reason, and in order for you to understand what I'm trying to say here, you need to understand the difference between a trivial truth and a dramatic truth. A lot of truths are really trivial. For a number of uh, months ago, there was a discussion, at least in Swedish newspapers, about the planet of Mars. And some scientists were raising the question, are there caves on the planet of, of Mars? Of course, it's either false or true that there are caves on Mars. But for me personally, I don't care. I think it's a trivial truth. It does not affect my life. I find a drama in it. Other, 
questions, other issues, are really dramatic truths. Let me take you, give you a personal example. A few years ago, or a number of years ago now, my wife, one morning, pointed at one point of my, of my chest and said, <coughs> that looks strange. And I had to look down and, yeah, it looked strange. And suddenly something very dramatic emerged. You know, it was totally impossible for me to say, well, for you it might be skin cancer. For me, it's a beauty spot. <laughs> there was a truth involved. It was either or. And the answer was dramatic. It affects my life. And if I had not done research into that issue, I would not have been able to deliver the reflect. It's a horrible example, I am sorry. <laughs> but I'm trying to give you a, an illustration. Some truths are really dramatic. They affect our life. And it's really important to get to know the truth about those issues. And I would say that Jesus of Nazareth is this kind of dramatic issue. Because, at least from a straightforward reading of the historical sources about him, here is a man who claims that he represents God, that he stands and speaks in the place of God, that he actually is the unique contact point between the Creator and us as his creatures. He claims that every other human being is on a journey that actually ends at his feet. And that you and I and everyone else has to give an account of our life before him, that he is the judge. And he claims that our in inner hunger and thirst ultimately is a hunger and thirst for him and what he can offer us because he is living water, he's the bread of life. He is, he claims, to be the ultimate solution to our deepest problem. That he is the meaning of life. Okay, if it's false, of course we should ignore this crazy man is lunatic. But if it's true, of course nothing can be more important than to relate one's life to him. So here's some kind of drama. Thirdly, a third reason to put some time to reflect about Jesus of Nazareth is that it's really trendy. It's hot. And it would like to be trendy people. <laughs> At least in Sweden, it's quite trendy. For the last decade, there's been a steady stream of books about the historical person of Jesus. And they all claim that we have new and amazing and exciting truths about this historical individual. It all started with the book The Da Vinci Code, <coughs> written by Dan Brown. It's, it's a novel, but in the novel there is a lot of claims related to Jesus. So, the book claims we have new sources, the Gnostic Gospels. They are more original, they are better, they are they give the true picture of Jesus. And he did not claim to be the Son of God. So you can just relax, he will not judge you. He was an ordinary man. He married Mary, Mary from Magdala, Mary Magdalene. They had a daughter, Sarah. They are actually people with the kind of blood from Jesus in their own body. Now that's not the real truth says Lena Aimo, a Swedish writer, in her book, Whatever Happened on the Way to Damascus. She said, the new truth about Jesus is this. He survived the crucifixion. Everyone thought he was dead. But actually, he survived. And he was taken down to Egypt. He recovered from, from, uh, from all his uh, uh, wounds. And then he, he longed to go back to Israel and continue to preach his message of love and, and of the kingdom of God and so on. But he couldn't come there and say, hey, I'm back! Because everyone thought he was there. <coughs> so then Jesus made a total makeover. And he traveled back to Israel and introduced himself not as Jesus from Nazareth, but as Paul from Tarsus. So actually Jesus and Paul is the same person. And Jesus is just a big fraud because he's lying about his identity. No, that's not the new truth. It's even worse, <laughs> says Roger Wittler in this massive, massive book. 
he, uh, he didn't even exist. Exist? He has never been there. There never was a Jesus from Nazareth. It's all a fiction, a legend, a myth. In the later part of the first century, that like the 80s, the 90s, the year 100, maybe even after that, some people started to create those stories and created the legend about Jesus, the myth about Jesus, and painting this wonderful figure. But back there in the circus, <coughs> there was never any Jesus from Nazareth. Now that is not the real truth. The real truth is this, says Michael Bayard. He actually exists. Existed, Jesus. And he did survive the crucifixion and was taken down to Egypt. But from Egypt, he traveled to France. And from France, he wrote, he himself, Jesus of Nazareth, wrote a letter to the Jewish leadership in Jerusalem, the Sanhedrin. And in the letter, he claims, it's all a mistake. It's a misunderstanding. I have never claimed to be the Son of God. And Michael Bagan, Bagan he has seen this letter. That's something, a handwritten letter by Jesus of Nazareth. <coughs> of course, there are some problems with this theory. One major problem is that no one else had 